Right now, two Kentucky police officers are in the hospital this morning following a shooting at a protest. We'll have the new developments from overnight. Plus, President Trump continuing to cast doubt on the security of the upcoming election. Why he's trying to tie it to the vacant Supreme Court seat. And we're talking rain chances in the upcoming forecast. All the details coming up. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, folks. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Leah Linshine. And I'm Josh Breider. Chris Stanford is on paternity leave. We start this morning with the latest out of Louisville, Kentucky, where two police officers are recovering after being shot and wounded during protests. They were shot while investigating reports of gunfire near a group of demonstrators. Louisville's interim police chief says they do have a suspect in custody this morning for the shooting, but did not say if the suspect was a participant in the protests. Both officers are expected to recover. One of them did have to go into surgery for their injuries. This all follows a grand jury's decision on whether to press charges against the officers involved in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor. Only one officer was charged and not directly in her death. Officer Brett Hankinson is indicted on three charges of wanton endangerment for shooting into her neighbor's apartments. Hankinson was fired from the force back in June. A makeshift memorial sits at the Wisconsin State Capitol this morning in Taylor's honor after vigil was held last night. Attendees supported the same message as protesters across the country, saying the charges against the one officer are not enough. A local defense attorney is helping us understand what exactly that officer is accused of doing. When you act in a way that exhibits, if you will, indifference to life with carelessness to a high degree or recklessness is what we call it. That right there is Chris Van Wagner, a defense attorney in town. He says wanton endangerment is similar to a charge of reckless endangerment in Wisconsin, meaning Officer Hankinson could have been shooting his gun without worrying about where his bullets went. This morning, President Trump is showing his support for Kentucky's attorney general after the grand jury's decision. The president called the state's AG a star and praised his defense of the ruling. I heard that. I said, write that down for me, please, because I think it's, it was a terrific statement. Um, he's handling it very well. The president there praising a statement from Kentucky's attorney general, asking people to remain peaceful following the decision. Presidential candidate Joe Biden also asked the people of Louisville to keep the peace if they decided to protest. One thing I want to make clear, protesting makes a lot of sense. It's clear people should be able to speak, but no violence, no violence. My heart goes out to that. The former vice president later tweeting that those who engage in violence during protests must be held accountable. To campaign 2020 this morning, President Trump says he can't confirm a peaceful transition of power should he lose in the November election. We're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots and the ballots are a disaster. The president previously said that Joe Biden could only win if the election is rigged. He also suggested the election results could be contested all the way to the Supreme Court. It's for that reason he says it's important that the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's vacant seat on the court is filled before Election Day. Meanwhile, six out of ten Americans say that seat should be filled by the incoming administration. That's the latest from a new CNN poll of more than 900 people this week. The last time a seat was open during an election year was in 2016, and opinions broke the other way then, with 57 percent saying President Obama should have been the one to fill the seat rather than the president elected in November. The Republican-controlled state legislature is appealing a federal court ruling allowing for absentee ballots to be counted up to six days after the November 3rd election. That appeal follows Monday's court ruling in favor of Democrats and their allies. The city and county clerks say they have been preparing for this and they will be ready either way. They said a similar situation happened in April and they're ready to handle a large number of absentee ballots on election day come November regardless of how this court ruling turns out. Depending on the ruling, voters should expect to see results on election night or on that sixth night. One of the things we've done is we've added more machines. So if you're a lot of polling locations, there'll be one machine that voters will be using to cast their ballot and another machine where poll workers are feeding absentees in, and that way, one's not getting slowed up by the other. Dane County Clerk Scott McDonald also said you can track your ballot online at myvotewisconsin.gov. He asked people not to call the clerk's office because it's only doubling their work right now. Instead, go online and follow the whole process there. 
Vice President Mike Pence will be back in Wisconsin today for another campaign stop. The Veep's bus tour will be rolling through Eau Claire for a visit to Midwest Manufacturing in that city. He'll then head on to Minneapolis for a Cops for Trump event there. The Vice President was just in Wisconsin last week for an event in Janesville. And this morning, Democrats are criticizing a trip from the Secretary of State to the Wisconsin State Capitol as a campaign stop. Mike Pompeo was in town yesterday for a foreign policy speech to lawmakers on the topic of China. It's a very important to me that the American people understand what the Department of State and President Trump are doing so that we can deliver security for the people of Wisconsin. Uh, I came here today to talk mostly about the threat from the Chinese Communist Party, but to talk more broadly about how uh, the American economy and prosperity and success here in Wisconsin delivers good international outcomes for the American people as well. This is a giant distraction. I never thought of Mike Pompeo as a shiny object, but he's the shiny object to distract the people away from the, the, the fact that the Republicans in this administration are not taking care of the people of Wisconsin. News 3 Now was granted an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the Secretary of State. We talked about how the rift with China is affecting the Wisconsin economy, the fight against possible Russian interference in the election, the Middle East, and even his future with the administration. You can see that interview in its entirety along with the Democratic response Sunday morning at 1030 on For the Record. 6.05, your time now. Hattie McLean tracking your first warm weather on this Thursday. Hi there, Hans. Good morning, Lee and Josh. Well, after 11 days of dry weather, we do have some rain chances back in the forecast over the coming days. The first one today, there is a cold front across the northern part of the state with a wave of low pressure riding along that front. Now, as this system tracks to the south and east, it is expected to weaken. So it's just a chance of rain in our forecast. Definitely not a guarantee as that front moves through. Take a look at the uh, chances for rain going forward through the next 10 days. We do have chances, especially into next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. I think that's our best chance to see some scattered, more widespread shower activity. But again, for the time being, that activity staying to the north, We're having a few showers trying to pop up across southern Wisconsin. The air is very dry, though, so any showers that you see showing up on the radar map right now, not likely hitting the ground. Our temperatures this morning are still in the 50s. The last couple of mornings have been very mild, and this one is no exception. 54 now in Janesville, 55 in Madison, in the Dells, up close to 60 degrees. Temperatures are actually a little bit warmer to the north and west, where there is more cloud cover this morning. Take a look at your future track forecast model. Again, the clouds to the north and west early today. Watch what happens as we put this map into motion, though. Through the morning hours, those clouds really advance to the south and east. So it'll be mostly cloudy heading into the afternoon. Dry through the lunch hour and through most of the afternoon. Our best chances for rain stay to the north and west. Heading into this evening, though, with that weak front moving through, you can see just a chance for a shower here or there with that front passing. Not Again, not a guarantee. Any rain amounts are likely to be very light. Here's a look at your future track precipitation potential with this next rain event. Highest amounts well north and west of Madison. Here's a sneak peek at that extended forecast. We stay in the 70s through the weekend. That has not changed. But there are several chances for rain. On Saturday, there's a chance and then just a slight chance later on Sunday as a few weak systems move through. Again, the best chance is when that cooler weather arrives. We should see more widespread shower activity, windy conditions, and cloudy skies. I gotta find my umbrella. I don't even know where it's at right now. <laughs> Ditto. I know, we had a wet start to the month and then a nice break from the rain. ch ch, -ch changes on the way, Hattie, thank you. 608 right now, the director of the CDC says the vast majority of the United States is still at risk of catching the coronavirus. Preliminary results uh, appear to show that most Americans have not been infected with the virus and are still vulnerable to the infection, serious illness and death. A majority of our nation, um, more than 90% of the population remains susceptible. COVID-19 has spread across America at varying rates since it crossed U.S. shores in January. He says infecting as much as 15 to 20 percent of the population in some states and less than 1 percent in others. Here in Wisconsin, seven more people have died. 56 more have been hospitalized from COVID-19. Health officials confirmed more than 1,900 new cases in the last 24 hours. Of the more than 13,000 people tested for the virus in the past day, 13.1 percent of results are positive. According to DHS data, all seven 72 counties in Wisconsin have been classified as having high activity levels for disease spread. Dane County also surpassed 9,000 cases yesterday. Walmart is exploring drone deliveries of home coronavirus test kits this morning. 
Here's how it works. Customers will get a text when the drone is on the way. The drones will land in people's driveways, front sidewalks, or backyards. Delivery is free. It can take as little as five minutes, and results are back to you typically within two days. 609, turning to your first warrant traffic this morning, and we have an update on that crash. This is on the northeast side of the metro. This is the ramp from I-94 west to I-39 north this morning. Crews tell us that a semi rolled over on that ramp. A second semi crashed into that already crashed there. But we are told there are some minor injuries, and there is a tow truck on scene trying to clear that off right now still closed we have a do uh, do have a crew at the way to the scene so we'll have an update for you as soon as we get that the rest of the Mattis metro looking like this beltline a okay so far this morning park street and also west wash east washington not too bad taking down to jamesville right now seeing a couple of slowdowns between evansville and jamesville along highway 14 you might have a couple of brake lights there but other than that no problems as we take a look at your drive times let's take uh that is a look at your first one trout trip traffic this morning. Coming up, a record-breaking wildfire season continues in the western part of the country. Meteorologist Aaron White joining us next with when that state could see some much-needed rain. Plus, more delays in the entertainment industry, how the pandemic is already affecting plans for next year's events. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Spas. The Swim Spa Hot Tub and Sauna Show is this weekend only. Rows and rows of spas, hot tubs, and swim spas. The largest display in the state. Save up to 60% on all in-stock models. This weekend only in the Exhibition Hall of the Alliant Energy Center, Madison. Working out? Not canceled. Catching up? Not canceled. Game night? Not canceled. Nap time? Not canceled. If new carpet would make you happier at home, we're here to help with standard carpet installation of just $75. Carpet one room or your whole house. And installation is only $75 while we celebrate our 75th anniversary. Coil Carpet One Floor and Home, locally owned and operated since 1945. He has his grandfather's smile. Her mother's eyes. My cheekbones. But will she have my diabetes? My sickle cell anemia. His father's heart disease? Go to joinallofus.org to share your health information and speed up health research breakthroughs. The future of health begins with you. percent APR financing for 60 months on a new 2020 Toyota RAV4. To learn more about this and other great offers, visit toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. These deals are amazing. I know. How do we get them? Okay, we have to be very subtle about asking like this. Like this? No, like this. Actually, you don't have to do any of that. We have great deals for everyone. Even without the... You would have gotten it anyway. Cool. If you've forgotten what a fair deal sounds like, let us remind you. Switch to U.S. Cellular and get $700 off the latest smartphones with no activation fee. U.S. Cellular. Upgrade to fair. Donald Trump is lying again. Joe Biden will not raise taxes on anyone making under $400,000. Biden will close tax loopholes for big corporations. Trump's tax cut giveaway exploded our debt, so he's threatening Social Security and Medicare. Biden will make the wealthy and big corporations pay their fair share so we can protect Social Security and Medicare and invest in schools and health care. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Spas, spas, spas. The Swim Spa Hot Tub and Sauna Show is this weekend only. Rows and rows of spas, hot tubs, and swim spas. The largest display in the state. Save up to 60% on all in-stock models. This weekend only in the Exhibition Hall of the Alliant Energy Center, Madison. Welcome back. A massive wildfire that's been burning in California for more than two weeks now is now the largest single wildfire that state has ever seen. The Creek Fire has burned more than 289,000 acres. It's destroyed more than 850 buildings. Fire right now just about 30% contained. The Creek Fire is one of 26 major wildfires that are currently active in California. There are more than 18,000 firefighters on the front lines this morning. 
Another one of those fires, the Bobcat Fire, burning north of L.A., is now the subject of a federal investigation. So far, it's burned more than 113,000 acres and might have been sparked by equipment from the Southern California Edison Power Company. It wouldn't be the first time the power company has been blamed for causing a major wildfire. Last November, SCE agreed to pay $360 million to settle lawsuits over wildfire sparked by its equipment. The Bobcat fire has destroyed more than two dozen homes. As of now, it's only 38% contained. Some good news out of Colorado this morning. The largest wildfire in that state's history is now 100% contained. The Pine Gulch fire burned nearly 140,000 acres since it was first reported back on July 31st. It took less than two weeks for it to break into Colorado's top 10 fires of all time. That state's Bureau of Land Management says the fire was started by a lightning strike. Meteorologist Aaron White is here with us this morning. And Aaron, some of these folks might get some much needed relief, some rain on the way. Yeah, we are starting to see that this morning across uh, portions of the northwest. Uh, not so much in Colorado, but at least some good news that those fires are being contained by the firefighters out there. But still, several large fires burning across California into Oregon and parts of Washington State. But as we look at satellite and radar, we are starting to see some of that rain moving into Washington and Oregon, even northwestern California, uh, right around Eureka, seeing some uh, lighter rain showers. And th these are the areas that are going to be seeing the rain over the course of the next uh, couple of days. Not going to see much in the way of rainfall across most of California, but as we look at rainfall amounts, they are going to be uh, fairly substantial, I got to say, across uh, portions of Washington into Oregon. Uh, some areas could see well over an inch of rainfall, and that is still some areas where those fires are burning. You can see right around uh, just south and east of Portland, east of Eugene, and into uh, central portions of Oregon. Also in Idaho, going to see some of that rain as well, but across California where there are still a lot of fires, not seeing much of the way of rainfall over the course of the next uh, two to three days. So hopefully we can see some change with the weather pattern as we go into the, uh, the next couple of weeks, especially into October as well as things start to maybe get a little bit more active across the Pacific in terms of uh, more storms, more rainfall for the rest coast. And overall for rain, we are looking at that potential going into Wisconsin as well. Hattie, uh, maybe some rain showers today, but uh, more potential uh, next week. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about a change in the weather pattern and we certainly are going to see that change here across southern Wisconsin. Take a look at the upper air weather pattern. This really drives the weather across the country and we've been in a very nice pattern for southern Wisconsin with temperatures on the mild side and dry conditions. Now that weather pattern is going to hold as we go through the weekend, but heading into next week, take a look at this trough of low pressure that begins to dig southward into the Great Lakes region. So that indicates we are going to start to cool down some of that colder air that's been locked up into Canada will be allowed to sink southward and that uh, trough of low pressure just becomes firmly entrenched in the eastern part of the United States. Take a look at how far south that cold air gets almost to the Gulf Coast as we head through next week. So we are going to see a big change in our temperatures and that's reflected in the high temperature trend. A little bit of a roller coaster ride there for us with temps well above normal through this weekend and then back into the 50s next week. So if you've put the jacket away or haven't gotten it out yet, you might want to locate it for next week. Here's a look at our rain chances today. It is raining right now in the North Woods. A lot of cloud cover moving into the state as well. We'll see some of those clouds spread into the Madison area this morning. Overall, though, no severe weather is expected. Here's a look at your bus stop weather forecast. It is still a mild start to the day. Again, those clouds build through the day. There's a chance on the way home, especially if you're north and west of Madison, that you may see a few showers on the way home from school. It's still going to be mild today, though, with highs at 73 degrees. In your professional opinion, Hans, <laughs> yeah. are we going to get back to the 70s in October? You think we're done? We could, yes. It doesn't look like it's going to stay cold through the month. In fact, the monthly outlook for November indicates above normal temperatures. Yes. So you're saying so there's a chance. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. I think the 90s are gone. <laughs> okay. Maybe even Which the 80s. I'm okay with. I'm okay <laughs> we'll take with that. that. But we could, we could get back into the 70s. Good news, Hattie. Thank you. 618 now. Bad news. Movie fans, Disney is pushing back release dates for all of its upcoming movies. That includes the latest Marvel blockbuster, Black Widow, which was set to be Disney's first major release in theaters since March. The superhero flick starring Scarlett Johansson in the title role was set for release on November 6th, but Disney pushed back the opening to May 7th. This is the second time the movie's release has been delayed. It was originally supposed to open this past May. 
The pandemic, of course, shut down movie theaters across the country. Along with movie delays, upcoming events are already making plans to go virtual next year. South by Southwest is going digital in 2021. The annual event will include conference, keynotes, screenings, networking, and also exhibitions. It's scheduled to take place March 16th through the 20th. Officials say they've joined forces with the city of Austin to still plan for physical events in case they can be held. This year's event uh, festival was one of the first events to be canceled in March because of the pandemic. Well, we're all looking forward to saying goodbye to 2020, I think. We just fast forward to the end of the year, but like everything else, plan on doing it virtually. Organizers in New York say the Times Square ball drop will be completely online. They say there will still be live entertainment, but it'll be limited. Details are still being ironed out this morning and who will be performing will be announced soon. So many questions for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for New Year's, all of your plans, regardless of whether they're on Times Square, really up in the air right now. It's such a bummer because I think it's just that uneasiness that we're still feeling even, what, six, seven months into this pandemic where we aren't really seeing any light at the end of the tunnel yet. Right, and I think right. a lot of people are hoping let's fast forward into next year. But even next year, there are things that are already in question. So it's a long pandemic. Ugh. Let me tell you, I know it's been you, a long year. It really has. But you just have to find find those, you know, little things here and there that get you through every day, because I think it comes, comes kind of comes down to those simple things in life again. Too, Enjoy so. being at home. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 620 right now and still ahead for us on this Thursday morning. Now that it's fall, you can get pumpkin spice and just about everything. We'll explain coming up and ahead in our next half hour, we will hear from President Trump and Joe Biden after an indictment in the Breonna Taylor case, new protests and two officers shot in Kentucky. We'll be right back. With a nursing degree, helping others went from a job to a career. The Golf Range and Suites of Vitens Golfland provide safe fun. Golf Range buckets and balls are sanitized after each use, and high touch areas are regularly sanitized. Old grill and bar service is provided safely to your golf suite by wait staff. Try fun, easy to play top tracer games like Go Fish only at Vitens Golfland. If you're hearing a grinding or squealing when coming to a stop, it's time to have your brakes checked. Meineke's 23 point inspection will identify the problem and get them in working order. Stop in or make an appointment online today. Meineke, doing car care right. It's the furniture sale you don't want to miss. It's A1 Furniture's Back and Better Than Ever sale. Save up to 40% store-wide. Living room sets, bedroom sets, dining room sets, all up to 40% off our already low prices. Plus, tax included on every purchase over $4.99. And that's not all. How about take 48 months to pay with no interest to qualified buyers? Most in-store items available for immediate pickup or delivery. Shop in-store or online at A1Furniture.com. Don't miss the A1 Back and Better Than Ever sale. On now. I want to make it absolutely clear, rioting is not protesting, looting is not protesting, it's lawlessness, plain and simple, and those who do it should be prosecuted. Fires are burning and we have a president who fans the flames. He can't stop the violence because for years he's fomented it, but his failure to call on his own supporters to stop acting as an armed militia in this country shows how weak he is. Violence will not bring change. It'll only bring destruction. It's wrong in every way. If I were president, my language would be less divisive. I'd be looking to lower the temperature in this country, not raise it. Donald Trump is determined to instill fear in America because Donald Trump adds fuel to every fire. This is not who we are. I believe we'll be guided by the words of Pope John Paul II, words drawn from the scriptures. Be not afraid. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Your parents spent years taking care of you, but as the years go by, it becomes your turn to take care of them. This might mean trusting a nursing home, which promises to care for them as cherished loved ones. But if the nursing home you've chosen is not keeping their promise, we can help. If your parents have been injured in a nursing home, call Habish, Habish & Rotier. We fight for what's right. Wells Asphalt Paving, expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. Buy Tens Golfland offers three award-winning 18 hole miniature golf courses, two outside and one inside, all open day and night. Have peace of mind. Miniature golf clubs and balls are sanitized after each use, and high touch areas are regularly sanitized. Enjoy safe fun for everyone at Buy Tens Golfland. 
Welcome back. Our annual Coats for Kids drive is underway, and every morning we'll be updating our coat count to show you just how much of a difference your donations are making. Yeah, we now have 1,264 items, picking up more than 170 donations from yesterday. Thank you for all of your donations so far, and if you haven't donated already, there is still plenty of time. The Community Action Coalition says they are expecting a bigger need than usual this year, with so many families having a tough time financially during the pandemic, so make sure you check your closets. Drop off all of your coats, along with any other winter gear you have, hats, gloves, anything of that sort, you can drop them off at any Clinky Cleaners location in the area by October 10th. Okay, 624 now, pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin spice muffins, pumpkin spice cookies. This time of year, everything is pumpkin spice, including decorations, but uh, this one might be taking it a little <laughs> too far. Yeah, depending on who you are here, thanks to Kraft, pumpkin spice mac and cheese is now a thing. Uh oh. The box of fall flavored comfort food comes with a pumpkin spice flavored powder to add to the classic cheese powder along with cinnamon to sprinkle on top. You know, we were talking earlier, this is the ultimate comfort food. It really is. I mean, <laughs> it looks pretty good in that little, that's like a cup. Yeah, but that's coming yeah. from Josh Spreider who puts pumpkin spice in everything he oh, can get okay. his hands on. Not really. Did you I start do like pumpkin, pumpkin spice. spice in like August, Josh? Uh, yes. No, I, I waited yes. until September. I did oh, not have I'm it. I'm sorry, in he August. was on the caramel macchiato train. <laughs> yes, in the caramel. <laughs> Aaron just brought me this. This is a pumpkin spice coffee pod. See, oh, Aaron's boy. on that train too. <laughs> yeah. I might need to hit him up. I need some <laughs> coffee today. I'm struggling. <laughs> I know. It is a good day for coffee. It's not terribly chilly outside though this morning. Take a live look from the Edgewater Sky Camera. Nice uh, view of the sky there. Here's what it looks like on the west side of town. There's a little bit of cloud cover moving in. In. I am watching just a chance for rain today. We've been dealing with some fog in Boscobel, but that's about it. It's not widespread this morning. Here's Doppler track showing you that most of the activity is still up towards Eau Claire this morning. Our morning will be dry with temperatures reaching the mid 70s later on this afternoon. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Three now first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Don't wait until the weekend to enjoy a thick charbroil steak made to your liking. Make a weeknight steak night at High Point Steakhouse, Southern Wisconsin's premier supper club. Well worth the short drive to Ridgeway. Hi, I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. And if you haven't tried Plexiderm, we've created the best offer yet with our Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge. All it takes is 10 minutes to reduce the appearance of under-eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. Even the 11 lines between your eyes are visibly gone in minutes. Plexiderm works so well, makeup artists, celebrities in Hollywood, and even people across the country just like you look and feel years younger in minutes. So I've had under-eye bags for a very long time and it sucks. I have spent so much money on tons of eye creams, eye gels. Finally, I tried something called Plexiderm and I'm not joking, it works. When I do a collage and everything is done, it looks amazing. That is exactly how Plexiderm makes me feel. I put it on my face and somehow, some way, I look together, which is amazing. I'm Jackie and I took the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge and so should you. I'm Neela. I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. And yet, when you look in the mirror, what you see necessarily isn't what you feel inside. Plexiderm, seriously, I look 20 years younger than I did before. And that's so super important because my whole life is about health, fitness, feeling good, and looking good. And first chance I really got to look how I feel inside. Honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there, like the bags are gone. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shell rock. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing the appearance of under eye bags and wrinkles in minutes. So if under eye bags and wrinkles make you look tired and older, take action with
with the Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge. Try it today for only $14.95, plus get free shipping. Visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. The coronavirus has forced the government to take extensive actions, making this the most opportunistic time for you to finally restructure or even resolve your tax debt with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, have unfiled tax returns, and are experiencing hardships because of the impact of COVID-19, you could qualify for more aggressive resolution plans with the IRS. National Tax Experts has specialists ready to help you determine your eligibility for these programs. Act now before it's too late. Call 1-800-392-6331. If a wedding or special event is in your future, consider the new Grand Ballroom at High Point Steakhouse. With panoramic driftless area views and an award-winning custom menu, it's the perfect choice for the perfect wedding or banquet. The Grand Ballroom at High Point Steakhouse. A decision on indictment. More protests and two police officers shot. We have the latest on the Breonna Taylor case out of Louisville. And watching some clouds move in the area today. They may bring a few showers with them as well. The full forecast is coming up. This is News 3 Now This Morning. We do want to start this half hour with some breaking new developments about a crash on the interstate this morning. Let's take a live look right now from the scene. Our photojournalist Mark Schilling there. Within the last 30 minutes, we've learned a semi-truck crashed into another semi-truck, which had already rolled over. Now, this is from I-94 westbound onto the I-39 northbound ramp. That ramp is shut down at this hour. It's been shut down for the last couple of hours. We're told someone has very minor injuries because of those crashes. Again, you can see the tow truck on the scene there working to clear that crash. Uh, we're going to have more on how this will affect your morning rush coming up here in the next 10 minutes. To our other top story this morning, protests stemming from the charging decision in Breonna Taylor's death in Kentucky are shutting down streets across the country, including here in Wisconsin. In Milwaukee, a group of protesters shut down a stretch of I-94 overnight. This is new video just into the newsroom. Our partners in Milwaukee say police used tear gas to disperse what reporters there described as a peaceful crowd. Protests have continued in several other cities as well, including Chicago, New York, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and Philadelphia. In Louisville, two officers working at the protests are recovering after being shot. One person is in custody this morning suspected in those shootings. The police chief wouldn't say whether the suspect was a protester or an outside agitator. It happened as protesters tried to avoid police blockades, moving down alleyways as officers threw pepper balls at them. Several officers with long guns formed the area and officers in ride gear and military vehicles blocked the roads. Both officers are expected to be okay and recover. One is in surgery though, the FBI also investigating. New overnight, we're now hearing from both major party presidential candidates following these shootings. President Trump saying the federal government is standing with police officers in Louisville. He says he's spoken with that state's governor and is ready to work with the state government if it's requested. The president says he's praying for the officer. Democratic presidential hopeful Joe Biden says he and his wife Jill are also praying this morning. Biden says even though people are feeling profound grief and anger, violence is never and can never be the answer. Biden says whoever engages in this kind of activity needs to be held responsible. Now all of these riots stem from yesterday afternoon's announcement by the Kentucky Attorney General. For months, protesters have been demanding justice for Breonna Taylor. Now, no officers will be charged directly in her death. Prosecutors say the two officers who shot at Taylor were justified because Taylor's boyfriend shot them first in self-defense. One of the three, Brett Hankinson, is facing a felony charge for shooting at Taylor's neighbor's apartment. The city of Louisville has already paid the Taylor family $12 million in a wrongful death lawsuit. And the FBI is still investigating the raid at Taylor's house to see if there were any violations of federal law. Right now, two people accused of trying to damage and burn down buildings in downtown Madison last month are facing charges. A criminal complaint alleges 27-year-old Anessa Fierro and 45-year-old Willie Johnson broke windows and doors of the building and poured liquid from a gasoline container into them. The complaint alleges the two tried to start the liquid on fire, successfully starting one at one building. Police stopped them before they could start a fire at the other. 
Police say the second building included residential apartments, some of which were occupied at the time. A new report into the newsroom overnight finds black people in Milwaukee are eight times more likely to be pulled over and seven more times to be frisked by police compared to white people. Additionally, officers with that department only provided sufficient documented justification for less than a quarter of the frisks they completed in 2019. That's according to the latest report from the Crime and Justice Institute. The Milwaukee Police Department says it's taking that report very seriously and is still looking over the findings. Another study out this morning shows inequities between black and white Americans have cost the country $16 trillion. The research by Citigroup finds black workers have lost more than $113 billion in potential wages over the past 20 years because they couldn't get a college degree. The housing market lost $218 billion in sales because black applicants couldn't get home loans. If these gaps close today, the U.S. could have $5 trillion more in GDP over the next five years. Timer now is 634. Take a look at this. This is a satellite image by the National Weather Service. In that circled area, you can finally start to see some of the fall colors in the Upper Peninsula and Northern Wisconsin. They say those areas are already in near peak season. Hattie has more of those fall-like photos. We are getting a lot of these. This is such a good time of the year if you want to get out and take some pics. Oh, love it. Yeah. And you know if you can see the colors from the satellite yeah. they're pretty impressive on the ground now we're definitely not at that level of color here across southern Wisconsin but here are a few pictures that we've gotten in this one is from Lutzen Minnesota Chester sent that one in beautiful color on the north shore of Lake Superior there Linda sent this one in from Edgerton and then from Hill Point Craig sent this one in as well so you can see there are some hints of color even if we're not at peak color just yet here across southern Wisconsin we've had a beautiful stretch of weather for these colors to turn and we are starting to see some real color change in the north woods this morning 25 to 50 percent of the trees have turned color there for the southern and central parts of the state we're a little slower than that but again starting to see those hints of color here even in southern wisconsin now what do we need to get the uh, great colors in the fall well the oranges and yellows those happen automatically the lower or the shorter days signal those trees to start producing those colors or la not producing the green as much so you start to see those colors show through so we get those every year but the reds and purples they're not guaranteed what you need are crisp cool nights and dry mild days well we've had the dry mild days we haven't been that cool at night just yet but we are going to see our temperatures cool down now unfortunately with that cool down we are going to see some rain as well that's not a good thing for fall color here's a look at Doppler track this morning there are some showers and even a few thunderstorms around the Minneapolis area this morning most of the rain though confined to areas well north of Madison at this hour on the radar map, a few light showers have been trying to work their way into the area, but they pretty much fall apart as soon as they develop. Not hitting the ground just yet here. Our temperatures are in the 50s, 55 in Madison, 59 in the Dells, 54 this morning in Janesville. In Watertown, it's 52. Our future track forecast model shows you that before we see any rain, we are going to see the clouds return. We've had some nice, dry, sunny days, but it will be uh, turning cloudy through the day today, so by lunchtime, most mostly cloudy skies. You'll see that rain stays to the north and west through the lunch hour and even through most of the afternoon. Later on this evening, as that weak front begins to move through, it nearly falls apart across southern Wisconsin, but there is a chance for a little bit of rain. Most of that measurable precipitation, though, will be to the north and west. Here's a look at your extended forecast. Another beautiful day tomorrow. You can get outside and enjoy some of those colors. 78 with partly sunny skies and breezy conditions. Chances for rain then are back in the forecast on Saturday right into next week. Notice that drop off in the temperatures. We go from 78 on Friday to 58 on Tuesday. Now, at least that's not in 24 hours, but that is a big change in temperature. Lee, are you worried about your plants? <laughs> I am never going to live this down. <laughs> Wait, I told her to bring those in. Just bring them in to be safe. <laughs> Leah's I'm bring speechless it. right now. For weeks, these people have been like, oh, Leah, it's too, it's too warm outside to bring them in. Leah will bring the plants in when I uh, drop off the coats. There you go. Yes, there you go. There, that's, that's the deal from now so on. So never? My goodness. You too. All right. 637 right now. Less than six weeks out from the presidential election, President Trump is refusing to commit to a peaceful transition of power if he isn't reelected. Here are his exact comments from the White House. Win, lose, or draw in this election, 
Will you commit here today for a peaceful transferal of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I and, understand that, but and, people are rioting. Do you oh, commit to making sure that there's a no, peaceful wanna, transfer of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Uh, the ballots are out of control. You know it, and you know who knows it better than anybody else. The Democrats know it better than anybody else. The president has previously said that his rival Joe Biden could only win in November if the election is, quote, rigged. President Trump has also had an inconsistent stance on mail-in voting. He said he's against funding for the U.S. Postal Service because of mail-in voting concerns, despite there being no evidence that mail-in voting causes fraud. But just this Monday, the president urged his New Hampshire supporters on Twitter to apply for an absentee ballot, saying it is, quote, safe and secure. A record number of voters are requesting absentee ballots in Wisconsin for the November election, but that doesn't necessarily make the system any less secure. What it does is put more pressure on you not to procrastinate. Four and five ballots in Dane County are expected to be returned by mail. UW political science professor Barry Burden says, though it's generally safe, there are still some risks. You know, voters who are marking a ballot at home don't have the help of a poll worker who would give them assistance at the polling place uh, and are relying on the Postal Service to help make all of this work. And so that just creates, I think, some additional uncertainties. So clerks are giving you the option to turn your ballot in. Secure drop boxes are in place in Madison, Monona, and Fitchburg. The boxes are monitored all day, and they are more secure than putting your ballot in your own mailbox at home. Regardless of how you choose to turn your ballot in, elections officials say you should request it now and vote as soon as you can. New this morning, the rules for college students using voter IDs to vote in Wisconsin won't change before Election Day. A federal judge says he won't make a ruling before the election to avoid causing confusion. The lawsuit challenges a state law that requires student IDs to have an expiration date in order to be used. Right now, the spread of COVID-19 on the UW-Madison campus seems to be slowing down. The seven-day percentage of positive cases for students testing on campus is still hovering around 5.5%. 23 people tested positive yesterday, all of them students. Around 2,000 students are now free to leave their dorms after ending a two-week quarantine mandate. This at Witte and Celery Halls. Starting next week, the university says it will be testing all in-housing residents weekly. Some in-person classes and activities will resume on Saturday. New this morning, the UW Athletics Department could still see a $70 million shortfall, even with football season returning this fall. The Journal Sentinel reports the athletic department is projecting a budget hole of up to $70 million for the 2020-21 fiscal year. UW won't be selling football tickets this year, which usually brings in around $25 bucks each season. Back to that breaking news. We have new developments about a crash on the interstate. Within the last 10 minutes, one of the trucks involved in that crash on the interstate was towed away. This is a live look at the scene from our photojournalist Mark Schilling. It does look like we do have some vehicles moving through there right now. Um, we're told that a semi had rolled over around 3 o'clock this morning, and then another semi crashed into it. We're told someone has very minor injuries because of those crashes. We're going to keep a very close eye on this. Let's take a closer look at my first worn traffic maps right now. You can see... The icon's still popping up on the map, though, but as we just saw there in that live shot, it looks like traffic is moving along just fine, so it might take a couple of minutes for this to pop back up and pop back free. The rest of the area looking like this. Looks like we do have a new crash popping up on the Beltline this morning. I'll have some details on that coming up during the morning sprint. The rest of the Mattis Metro, though, looking good. Let's take a live look outside right now from the Edgewater Skycam. Beautiful start to this Thursday. The gateway, the window, whatever you want to call it, we are very close to the weekend. Again, folks, but Hattie's talking about a little bit of a change in the forecast, including some moisture moving in. That's coming up. And this isn't something you see every day. We'll explain what we think happened here coming up after the break. Uneven services are a major hazard to your family, friends, and employees. Don't risk another fall. Let concrete lifting technologies raise up your pavement. Our minimally intrusive process uses polyurethane to level sunken concrete and provide an even surface. Plus, this process is a fraction of the cost to replacing your driveway. Concrete Lifting Technologies, Southern Wisconsin's premier concrete leveling specialists. For a free estimate, contact us today. When looking for a TV and internet provider, we know you have a choice. This is Jessica. She still has satellite TV. Well, I get tons.
tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD, and we love Spectrum's 24-hour local news channel. Plus, we get exclusive access to premium original content with Spectrum Originals. I don't have that. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-976-4499. Spectrum Internet starts at 200 megabits with no data caps and a free modem. We have to get internet from another company, and it isn't nearly as fast. Spectrum Internet, $44.99 a month. I'd switch, but I'm stuck in a contract and would have to pay up to $480 to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts, and they'll pay up to $500 to help you out of yours. That's it. I'm switching to Spectrum. Get Spectrum TV and Internet from $44.99 a month each. Call 833-976-4499. The chief actuary of the Social Security Administration just released an analysis of Trump's planned cuts to Social Security. Under Trump's plan, Social Security would become permanently depleted by the middle of calendar year 2023. If Trump gets his way, Social Security benefits will run out in just three years from now. Don't let it happen. Joe Biden will protect Social Security. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Baca Enterprises is truly humbled and thankful to all of our employees, residents, families, and vendors for their patience and cooperation. Our employees have gone above and beyond with sanitation efforts, altering their daily routines, all while spreading joy and happiness throughout our community. As you look forward to the future, Tennyson Assisted Living will be here for you. To provide a sense of security and to provide comfort by keeping you safe and healthy. Together, we're moving forward to help you live life with confidence. Call today to schedule your tour. On the next live before COVID-19 continues to hit Wisconsin and Dane County very hard. We'll get the latest news on vaccines and therapeutics from Dr. Zorba Pastor, who will also take your calls. Wisconsin voters deserve the truth. I'm News 3 Now's Amy Reed. I'm breaking down political ads, explaining whose money is behind them and separating truth from misinformation. Get the facts with Reality Check, only on News 3 Now. Quarter to seven, we love a good animal video here on News 3 Now this morning, but we're going to need your help figuring out what the heck is going on in this next story. Easily the best story of the morning. <laughs> Take a look at this. This video going viral for some obvious reasons. It's a moose who seems to be running on top of a river. Hey, fella. <laughs> we're not exactly sure where this was taken, uh, but we're a little confused because you would imagine the water is shallow for him to be running across the top of it. However, there's a boat going pretty quickly right next to it. Yeah, so the internet has named it Juice or Jesus Moose. I mean, it literally looks like it is walking on top of water. I'm trying to figure this out. I think it's got to be like an airboat or something that can go on shallow water, or like a duck boat or something. But look at it, it's shallow look at, there, but... Yeah, look at the end. Look at the end. It's almost like it falls in. It looks a little deeper there. There starts a splish, splash. What a majestic animal. I love this. Either way, very, very cool. Isn't that the so neat? The music behind it is oh really my funny, goodness. too. Of course, on everyone's favorite TikTok right now. Hads, I'm sad that you and I both missed this when we went to Yellowstone. Yeah, you know, I did, I was hiking and nearly crossed paths with a moose. So I remember you saying that. Scary. It was a little scary because they had their, their little baby Yeah, them, she had right? her baby and yeah. she was not happy. They but. are big, too. And yeah. they can be mean. Yeah. Yeah, and when you're on the side of a mountain, there's not really many options of places to go. So. <laughs> Jump. Yield the yeah. trail. <laughs> By all means, sir, you take over. Yes, yes, exactly. So luckily she didn't charge us. Let's take a look at your forecast. It's not a bad day to be outside at all today. Temperatures are in the 50s this morning, 55 here in Madison. Winds are calm. We are noting a little bit more cloud cover, though, in the area than we have seen in the last couple of days. We've had pretty much 11 days with just hazy sunshine and dry weather across southern Wisconsin. That does change today. Here's a look at our weather track showing you the clouds moving in from the northwest. A few rain showers trying to push into the area as well. We're likely not to see any rain here in south central Wisconsin until later on this afternoon. Now our temperatures are starting off at 55 here in Madison and Mineral Point. A little warmer to the north and west where that cloud cover has been present a little bit longer overnight. Day planner temperatures take us into the mid 70s later on this afternoon. Again, chances for rain developing later on today. There are still chances for rain this weekend, but we still have temperatures in the 70s. Enjoy Saturday, high of 77, 70 on Sunday. The bottom kind of falls out after that. You'll definitely want your jacket and the umbrella next week.
All right, Hattie, thank you. 647, we are continuing to track breaking developments about a crash on the interstate. We'll have some new details coming up for you in the morning sprint. But first, it's September 24th. We want to say happy birthday to this little guy, oh. Leon. Hi, cutie. And everybody who's turning three today, thanks for celebrating with us here on News 3 Now this morning. We hope you have a great birthday, Leon. Look Who's 3 is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Indoor Water Park and Conference Center in Warrens, Wisconsin. Join Anytime Fitness on Tuesday, October 6th during our 12-hour sale and literally only pay what you can. It's our way of helping you get back to making healthy happen. Pay what you can on Tuesday, October 6th at Anytime Fitness. Working out? Not canceled. Catching up? Not canceled. Game night? Not canceled. Nap time, not canceled. If new carpet would make you happier at home, we're here to help with standard carpet installation of just $75. Carpet one room or your whole house. And installation is only $75 while we celebrate our 75th anniversary. Coil Carpet One Floor and Home, locally owned and operated since 1945. Stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Paraswabs. When I met Dr. Ginnaker and he introduced me to Paraswabs and I saw how effective they were and how easy they were to use, I knew we had to share it with the world. Paraswabs was clinically studied to whiten natural teeth as well as stained caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so effective, it works on stains caused by coffee, tea, red wine, and and even smoking. For those of you who have that one stained tooth that's darker than the rest, Power Swabs can target that area using swab precision. I really love the fact that you're able to go individually on each tooth and make sure that it's gonna be wider. If you have yellowing between your teeth, if you have coffee or tea stains near your gum line, just snap, swab, and smile. And in each five minute application, you'll see whiter teeth. So stop whitening your smile the old fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour and start using the power swabs five minute solution just snap swab and smile after just seven days the results were awesome power swabs was easy to use every day and each day i could see it better and better and from beginning to end it's definitely whiter uh, they look clean they feel clean um and people have made comments about it, which is nice. Call for your five-minute solution to whiter teeth. Order Power Swabs and receive up to 40% off the retail price. And as an added bonus, by ordering in response to this advertisement, get a free Power Swabs Quick Stick Pen with your order. The Quick Stick Pen is your on-the-go solution to help prevent stains from adhering to your teeth after drinking coffee, tea, or even after smoking. And in addition to saving up to 40% on your purchase and your free Quick Stick Pen, get free Free shipping by ordering now. Dial the number on your screen or visit powerswabs.com today. At Papa Murphy's, we make fresh pizza that you bake at home. Because home is where the fun is. For a limited time only, get the Combo Magnifico pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's, change the way you pizza. Download the Channel 3000 app today. Welcome back at 6.51, time for the morning sprint. Developing right now, two Louisville police officers monitoring protests are recovering at this hour after being shot. One person is in custody, suspected in those shootings. The police chief wouldn't say whether the suspect was a protester or an outside agitator. It happened as protesters tried to avoid police blockades, moving down alleyways as officers threw pepper balls at them. Several officers with long guns swarmed the area, and officers in riot gear and military vehicles blocked the road. Both officers are expected to recover. One is in surgery. The FBI is also investigating. Nationwide protests stem from the decision against charging the officers for Breonna Taylor's shooting death. Prosecutors say the two officers who shot at Taylor were justified in using force to protect themselves after Taylor's boyfriend shot at them first. Taylor's boyfriend has claimed self-defense since he believed the officers came into their home unannounced. One of the three officers, Brett Hankinson, is facing a felony charge for shooting at Taylor's neighbor's apartment. 
Kentucky's governor is now requesting for the evidence in the investigation to be released to the public. Local breaking news this morning. Madison police investigating a possible shots fired incident on the city's south side. It happened just after 11 last night on Geronimo Circle, not too far from Rimrock Road. When police got to the scene, they didn't find any property damage or anyone who was injured. Today is the last day where the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg will lie in repose. You're taking a live look at the Supreme Court this morning, where RBG will remain for another day. Her casket will be moved to the U.S. Capitol tomorrow. Ginsburg will be the first woman and the first Jewish person to lie in state. Wisconsin now has the second highest positivity rate for COVID-19 in the country. That's according to Reuters this morning. 13.1% of yesterday's tests came back positive. The promising news this morning, our curve looks like it's starting to flatten. Wisconsin now has 106,000 lifetime COVID-19 cases. About 15% of those cases are still active. Nearly half of Americans say they're having serious financial problems during the pandemic. An NPR poll finds nearly one in three respondents have already used up all or most of their savings. One in six households have reported missing or delaying major bills just to buy food. The food insecurity rate for families in the U.S. is now higher than it was during the Great Recession of 2008. One in three families with kids is experiencing food insecurity right now. That's double what it was just two years ago. This comes as the pandemic food stamp program is set to end in less than a week. We're getting an update this morning on a new produce option for you and your family, the Madison Public Market. The Market Foundation is announcing the first five vendors for the future market in a meeting scheduled for this morning. They'll also update us on the fundraising arm of the project and whether the pandemic has pushed back plans for the market. The foundation has already raised $3 million, but says another $7 million will be needed. The Brewers fall to the Reds, taking two of the three games in the series. The Reds couldn't stop hitting home runs. Every run they scored in this series has been from the long ball. They hit three more homers last night and beat the Brewers 6-1. to one. The Brewers hoping for more wins tonight against the Cardinals. First pitch, 7-15. Vice President Mike Pence will be back in Wisconsin today. He's scheduled to visit Eau Claire for a bus tour campaign event. He'll go to Midwest Manufacturing to speak before heading to Minneapolis for a Cops for Trump event. It's the Vice President's second visit to Wisconsin in as many weeks. President Trump is expected to announce a series of executive orders focused on health care as soon as today. Politico reports the orders could include a measure to safeguard insurance protections for pre-existing conditions. Other potential actions include efforts to prevent patients from getting surprise bills and an effort to address mental health. Back to that breaking news we have been following all morning. Within the last 20 minutes, one of the trucks involved in a crash on the interstate has been towed away. You can see traffic is flowing once again. This is a live look at the westbound ramp of I-94 as you head onto the northbound side of I-39 right now. Again, traffic moving along just fine. Details so far this morning around 3 o'clock. This morning, one semi rolled over, another semi crashed into that. Somebody is being treated for some very minor minor injuries because of that crash. Let's take a look at the maps this morning as you're heading out right now. You can see that icon has been cleared, so some good news again. Traffic flowing along just fine. The rest of the Madison Metro looking like this. We do have a new crash onto the Beltline. This is in the eastbound lanes at Stoughton Road right now. Looks like we're not seeing any significant delays from that yet. We'll keep our eye on that throughout CBS this morning. We do have quite a few slowdowns in and out of downtown along the East Washington corridor. That is a look at your first warm traffic. And your first warm weather forecast for watching the radar map today with a few showers possible later on this afternoon. Right now, all areas starting out dry. Probability of precipitation ramps up after 3 p.m. here in Madison. Not a guarantee that you'll see that rain, but it is in the forecast. So as you head out the door, you might want to grab that umbrella or at least locate it. You'll need it going forward. Temperatures, though, will still stay mild today. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.